Welcome back to Ultra Let's Podcast. I think we've done a fair few episodes now, but I'm delighted to introduce to everybody quite an exciting guest this time around. They all are exciting, by the way, in case anybody's watching. I've got Joe Greenham and yeah. Richard Simmons from Simmons & Greenham, who are estate agents in Hull, if you weren't aware. If you've been uh, driving around the city with your eyes closed, you, you probably won't have seen them, but um, welcome, lads. Thanks for coming in. Cheers. Thank Thanks you for having us. Um, I really just want to introduce our audience to you guys and, and explain your story and, and um, discuss, you know, what you've been up to and what's what's coming up for the future. Um, so can we start from the beginning and just set the scene with both of you and, um, you know, where you've come from, how you've got into this? Yeah. Go first. Um, I'll go first. Go on, Joe. Um, yes, I went to uni, didn't know what I wanted to do, went off backpacking for about five years. When was this then? Um, Ten years ago? Oh, no, it'd be longer than that. Right. About 17, 18 years ago. All oh, right. Yeah, and yeah, backpacking for five years, didn't really want to grow up. Right. <laughs> then came home and then realised it was time to grow up a bit. <laughs> so just fell into a job. Um, hard to mention rival company. Yeah, of course you are, yeah. Fell into a job at Beer Cox. Right. Um, so just started as a, just a next, just a trainee. Right. And then they put me at the Holderness branch, which is where I met Rich. Right. Where he was already an assistant manager. Um just, just, yeah, just hit off, really. Gone from there. Um, I think Rich was a bit threatened by me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you think that, Rich, when, when Joe joined? Did you think, oh, this yeah, guy knows what he's doing? He can't tell you what he thought. Yeah. No, really? I, I, uh, I wouldn't say threatened, but before that, I was very much the, I'd say, top dog there. Yeah. So the, the, I was the only breadwinner. The rest of the people who I worked with when commission orientated, mm. and I was, and then Joe came in. And he was also commission oriented. Quite often, some of the best friendships are born out of rivalries in a way. Yeah, we used to we used to talk all the time to each other about like business ideas mm. and how we thought things could work. And that eventually, I suppose, was the seeds for Simmons and Greenham. Mm. Um, yeah. So you've obviously learnt from the best at Beercox there. You've decided between the two of you that you thought we've got what it takes to to do something for ourselves. And I, I guess there'll be a lot of people in the state agency branches probably now, not just in Hull surrounding areas but all over the country thinking you know I could probably do this myself but it's a very difficult game to branch into isn't it were you surprised at how difficult it was or did you think it was easy um, it's difficult at first it's, it's like a long song you spend a lot of time not really making any money mm. so you're just like trying to build your power you see start with nothing do you mm. prop is in the window well, we had like the couple um we had, a, we had a bit of a legs deal that saw us. Yeah. I think taking the leap was the hardest part. And this, thinking your mortgage might not be paid mm -hmm. is the is a How old were you at this point? So you had mortgages and stuff, I guess. I, had, I, I was 27, 26, right. 27. Yeah, so I'm about 28, 29. Right. I was still living with my mum. Right. Yeah, yeah, moved back home with my mum. Um, which was good fun. And were you thinking, well, let's just go for it because yeah, well, if it fails, I can go back to my job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a bit of a... Because my dad passed away. Right. And I was like, right, I'm fed up. I just quit my job. I was like, I'm not fed up of making money for these people. Mm. I just thought I could do it myself. We'd always talked about doing yeah. something. So I got in Rich's ear and you had to ask your mum's permission. I won't give Rich's it to his mum's <laughs> um, And then we just went through it, yeah. Um, we just got all the branding in place. I just started working from your house, didn't we? We did work from my first bedroom. I think doing it now with like a bigger mortgage and two kids would be so much more difficult mm -hmm. because my expenses then, even though I had a mortgage, were relatively low. Mm -hmm. And I fortunately had a few bad selects then, so I thought, well, these will cover that. Didn't work out that way. I racked up loads of money on credit cards for the first two years of Simmons and Greenham. But in my head, I was thinking, okay, I can cover my expenses at the mm -hmm. very, very least. Mm -hmm. And then if this doesn't work out, I'll sod it. I'll yeah. go back, I'll get another job. But I didn't really have any doubt that it wouldn't work out. We just sort of hit it hard. Yeah. We grafted like mm. for three yeah. or four years. It was yeah, me and Joe that like grafted. Days. Really working Because it is a tough industry. People think it's just you open your doors and all of a sudden the phone rings. I know, yeah. I know from people I spoke to in the past who worked at William H. Brown or another local agent, very sort of corporate company, um, lead, the phone just rings because they've been around for so long yeah. that they'll always have a name. I think people work for established companies and they think, well, the phone always rings, yeah. it's easy. You just get a phone line and a phone number and a website and everybody's visiting it. But it's not quite like that, is it? You've really got to not put really. that. really. You've got to put the effort in to get the phone ring and get the leads coming in. Because it takes a while for people to notice. No one knows who you are to begin with. I think it was leaflets, really, wasn't it? Yeah. We literally leaflet dropped our area. 
right. all the time. Constantly. Which area was that? Hg five, Hg six, right? Constantly. Right. Yeah. Literally, we we were getting leaflets out all the time. Mm. Leaflets are relatively cheap to yeah. print. We had an opening deal, didn't we? When we opened up, and yeah. our sales price was four nine nine. Right, and no the, VAT. No VAT. Yeah. Of course, you can stand on the threshold, can't you? Yeah. Literally be the cheapest until people yeah. do the best. Be the cheapest, do the best job, and then just slowly raise the price at the mm. time, mm. which is what we've done. That tends to be a typical strategy, doesn't it? An open strategy. Yeah, for it, well, if you do it right, it works. So yeah. I've seen like a lot of people starting new agencies in mm. the last few years, and they just think they can go in and charge top yeah. line straight away. And it's like, well, why would I use you? Yeah. I suppose you can do it if you're trying to keep things small. If you're trying to go yeah. for a mass and trying to get boards and gardens, you've really yeah. got to try and compete on price, haven't you? Um, and then just word of mouth, isn't it, really, as well? Like, yeah. so you have to do a good job. Though, you like, do. You yeah. have to back it up. And then we just sort of lived off recommendations for a while. I think, yeah. Also because we were cheap as well. We were cheap. So, like, you know, you're getting a really good service for mm-hmm. the price. So why, I wouldn't, why wouldn't you use I know it? with us, we, so I started the business with a £35 plus VAT yeah. fixed management mm-hmm. fee. Yeah. So it was the only way, really, to get landlords interested. And yeah. to be honest... Probably the wrong landlords in a lot, lot of situations. Would yeah, you, you don't. no offense to any of our original customers that are still with us, but yeah. sometimes you can attract the wrong people by being cheap, can't you? Yeah, it just tends to be the people who want the cheapest prices tend to cause you the most issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. difficult over right. the yeah. years. Yeah, well, which, which is where we've kind of come away from. If you now. give them a good, like, a good service, they will recommend you. Yeah, of course. And it gave us time to develop our USP, which was, ended up being social media. Yeah. So now people can recognise us purely by social media. Yeah, now I want to come on to that because that's quite a, yeah. quite a key thing, isn't it? Um, what What do you think, you know, obviously so you guys... You have to walk at the same time. <laughs> He's so in sync, you. Can I join it? Um, the, what do you think pulled you away from the pack so quickly? Because there's a lot of companies that have been around for decades in Hull. Um, yeah. And in the last sort of 10 years, you, you'd probably agree that we haven't really seen many people set up in, in either sales or that in this for that matter. How have you managed to get from, what year was it you started? 2016? 2016, yeah. How have you gone from where you were there to now being one of the leading agents in the area so quickly? Crashed in. Had by a couple of as well. We have had a, yeah, a bit of a bit of luck. I mean, we suppose when you recruit people, it's difficult to mm. predict how good they're going to be. And so mm. our first couple of recruits where people we knew from being yeah. Ox. Right. And then um, after that, it, it became a lot better look at the next two Gemma and Megan Lee. We didn't know them, but back to William H. Brown. I, I knew Gemma sort of you, personally. Yeah, right. She was part of one of my good friends. Mm. Your work time I knew she was really good as well. Just you can t- I could tell just from speaking on the phone to people mm. sometimes as well. Yeah, the, the, the key, I think, is to, to find people that buy into your... Yeah, and definitely. support the journey. Yeah. And, and understand that there's going to be a bit of extra work that probably goes yeah. into that part. Um, sounds, sounds like you've got one. Yeah, I think that, that like hiring is one of the key. Like, as you grow, you make yeah. one bad decision. I think I remember that can just say three steps yeah I think they're all well, invested in our company yeah they all believe in it they all yeah. work hard they yeah. all do little things out of ours yeah. to, to help us grow as well and mm. they're all brilliant they're all bought into the brand and the journey yeah. as well they're all yeah. young hungry people who you know, wanted to make it a success yeah and mm. um, I think we we're don't be big head but I feel like we're good bosses as well like we're we really we care about them. what's the key like, to it what, what do you think what, what do you think you're doing right there in terms of running the business with the staff, yeah, just look after them, mm. care about them, treat them well. Just like they're an extension of your family, really. Mm. You know, oh, we have bus. I have bus to Gemma all the time. She's watching it. She's probably laughing. <laughs> we had one yesterday, right. um, but she you knows. Like, I, I value her so much. Like, I'm, and the same with all the staff. You just have to value them. I learned a lot. I don't know about you, Rich, but I learned a lot from previous companies about how not to treat people. Right. Um, and just took that with us moving forward, mm. really. Um, so I think if that they get, if you don't treat your staff well, they get demoted, they're not going to work for you. And it comes across on the phone, it comes across to the staff. And as you grow, you have to trust that they're going to mm. sort of be extensions of me and Rich in yeah, a way. Absolutely. And represent the business well, well, which they all do. Um, and yeah, just value them. So in those early days, it was obviously just the two of you. Yes, and you were, you were doing valuations, you were doing everything, sales progression. Yeah. yeah. So that was our office, which was our pillar of valuation. Right. And, 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 and from that point, obviously, you're able to control the output of the business so you can keep service levels yeah. as high as you're physically prepared to, to go with it in terms of your time and your... Valuations on a Sunday. Yeah, so I mean, you yeah. can put everything in. But then there comes a point where, especially the, the situation you're in now, where 
you can't physically do that job anymore no. in its entirety, even between the two of you. So you have to start looking at how do we grow this and scale this. Is there a particular traits you look for in, because I know you've got a couple of values now, have you, as well as you? Yeah, just yeah. Generally it was. Are there particular traits you look for in people to, to bring them in? Will's a salesman. I, I trained Will at Beer Cox. Right. And I'm not going to sort of think, oh, I saw something in it and I brought him with him. We were at a point where Will was our first employee and to be fair, it wasn't really much option for us because none of the managers from Beer Cox were going to come to us or, and Will was had been passed over for a promotion and I, personally speaking to him, I knew he was pissed off about that. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear or not. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> You'll be and, and, you know, after a couple of chats, we as we probably needed somebody and he came over and he grafted mm. and he worked hard and he's hungry he's hungry he's young he's, 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 he's smart he's, he's one of the best salesmen he's, 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 he's a very a good salesman very good but he's call centre trained right. we started the beer cox he had this really strange thing that he used to do in the call centre when he was pitching he'd stand up mm. and he'd do his pitch stood up because it made him feel empowered yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he used to do that all the time I don't think he does that anymore but he, he's got these really good, unique traits that make him a really good salesman and makes the customer buy into him. Mm. And I always thought he would be a good valuer once he started working with Simmons and Greenham and he's, he's proven right because he's, he's really good. So you've, you've sort of, for lack of a better phrase, raided another company, not just yourselves, but it oh, sounds like a lot of and Browns will hate us. Right, mate. Um, not just for taking What plans. are you going to do when that happens to you? Because you're getting to a size now where there's a threat that not to say existing staff, but there might be somebody comes on and says, do you know what? I could do yeah. this better than, than Rich and Joe can. I think there's a... Are you prepared for that, is it? I've heard someone It's say, just a fact of it. Well, it's, it's part of it, but I think I've heard someone say that you, you train your staff so that they can go anywhere, but yeah. train them so they won't. Yeah, yeah. And I hope that they won't, because, yeah. I mean, I, I might be wrong here, but I think we've only had two people leave, and I don't think it was sort of... It was quite amicable. We went yeah. all devastated to, to lose either of them. Well, it just needed full time. Just needed full time. Um, yeah. And she was in the company at the time. She was she came from Beer Cox as well. Mm. She's actually our lane manager, Matt, who also came from Beer Cox. Um, his, his wife. Oh, you do letting so we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard yeah. you dab. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, she, she was, she was high, high up at Beer Cox. She was always too good just to be in a company. Right. Viewer. Um, but we just didn't have a position. And the other both say, yeah, so she went. And it's kind of like three levels of it, my, in my opinion. One is obviously the one I've alluded to, where it's you two smashing it through top level service. There's the next level where you can have a high impact on the people that are working around you. You can hand select them. And then the third point, which a lot of the other bigger agents in this area are in now, is you can no longer even potentially hire them. You're not involved in the hiring of the people that come into the business. How do you think it, that's going to work in terms of carrying that culture through to that? through the business as it gets to that level? Because you, you can't be right. far off that now, really, on the thought. No, we're, we're hiring them at Bristol staff. That process is going to be involved. You, yeah. You've had the interview with Gemma. Yeah, me, me and Gemma did the interview, and I think Gemma and Will and probably Katie understand the culture mm. of what we're, we're trying to put across, and I think that they will understand that when they're interviewing people, they understand what we want because mm. they essentially understood... That's what got them the job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it comes that our job's very intense. We're quite a volume company. We yeah. do a lot of sales, and you're expected to work hard, but you get rewarded, mm. not just in terms of your pay or your commission, but in terms of your working environment. So we do a lot for them. We do socials. Mm. We do lots of vouchers, high targets, but you will get rewarded if you hit those targets. Yeah. And I think it's a nice place to work. Mm. I think it's a good environment, and... Hopefully, the higher staff members who have been with us from the early days will be able to affect the new starters mm. and make them understand it. But there'll be a situation where that doesn't happen. Yeah, obviously. And, yeah. you know, we'll... It's unavoidable. It's and, yeah, 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 it's not nice when you think, OK, someone might come in and not be somebody who wants to work hard and might mm. just be for an easy ride. But if that happens, you've got to deal with it. Is it running the business and valuing... Um, properties and things that you actually enjoy? Or are you prepared for when that changes into just being a business owner and dealing with all the other side <laughs> of things because like I know from my experience I used to do everything like you guys yeah. did and, so and now I, think, I don't do any of it I thought we are a bit in and out at the minute but yeah Will and Katie do the majority of the valuations but me and Joe back up and we're there to do it we, we try to focus on 
running the business, but when I do the evaluation and I get that signed contract, I still get that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm still, I'm still taking that picture yeah. in the contract, putting it in the office group. Yeah, and yeah. I'm hoping that motivates Will and Katie to think, yeah. right, Rich is going on today. I need to make sure that I get one. They need to see it matters yeah. to you as much yeah. as. Yeah. And, but it does, like, literally, like, if I go down a, a drive down the street and there's a house that I didn't value and there's a board up there, I still get that little pump and I'm like, yes. Mm. I don't know who put that on, but thank God. Yeah, no, I, I see loads of your balls all the time. <laughs> balls do breed balls, don't they? Oh, yeah. That's a Bob Beacock saying. Is it's it? That all the time. Right. Beacock's, yeah. yeah. Balls be brought. And it, it's true. Yeah. They do. People will see sold boards, mm. kind of for sale boards, because that will work. No. But if you see sold boards, stuff they cook it, they sell a lot of houses. Mm. And that's part of why we've been successful, because in our area, it might not be the biggest area, H 5 H 6 H 16 but people have seen our saw boards mm. and then have come and had a valuation for us. I know for myself, you know, if I, if I saw one of my neighbours who's up with you guys and it had sold with you, I'm thinking, well, now I've got the decision now is either I go with a company that sold one down the street and clearly demonstrated they can do the job, or I go to even somebody I might know a bit better, I'm probably going to go to the one who's, who's just sold down the street. So mm. it does carry a lot of influence, I think. Um, the other way you've had big impact, from my perspective, is is online, as you say, with social media and Instagram particularly. Um, how important do you consider that in this day and age? I think it's massive. Like we get lots of business just from social. I'll go to like uh, evaluation and be like, I'm not getting anyone else to value. I like your social media, so I'm getting really like, mm. okay, brilliant. So, yeah, I think it's massive. Well, what do you do? The first thing you do these days, and. Any company, if you're buying a new shed, a jacket, anything, what's the first thing you do? You go have a look at their social media, their Instagram mm. account, look at the reviews. Yeah, I think it's massive. Yeah, for me personally. Do you think I'm obviously going to say that because I run it as well? So. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You're taking the credit for that. I, I, I think it's, I think it's huge. Mm. And I think it's only get this bigger and bigger. Yeah. Said that for us from the day dot, we was like, we'll get Facebook is going to be a massive part of our branding and what we do and we worked hard on the Facebook side of it and we did sponsored posts mm. and Instagram came a bit more organically maybe a couple of years later mm. don't know if I have that no you're right yeah, yeah it was a lot of Facebook yeah very yeah, yeah, yeah. like Instagram just like blown up. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's what it bothers to those two platforms is that when you're setting up there's, there's quite a lot of barriers to entry you can't just go and open 10 offices because the cost of it and yeah, money it's yeah. just impossible so there's only a few things that you can actually compete with the competition on from yeah. day one and that's probably one of them, and I think that's you've done that well. Going to evaluations, we're on Raymove, Run Super, and we will advertise your property on Facebook, yeah. and we will target it to a specific target audience, mm -hmm. and that was something that we did that not very other, not bad, I don't think any other agent does. No. Yeah. Did they it. didn't to begin with, and then it's become very like video orientated, not like videos, like, it was like big. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's still agents who aren't doing it. Is it? Some of it, yeah. probably still only half. I think a lot of it's like a bit just lazy. Yeah. And if they're lazy on that front, I mean, how are they going to be lazy selling your house? It's like you just got to put the. Do you think people yourself. buy from seeing an advert on Instagram or a video? No, I don't think. Well, you do get the odd like we get viewings. So if I put like coming soon videos on, we'll get messages through Instagram with those that kind of view this house. So it's just more about building like a bit of momentum, a bit of a buzz about a property. So mm. it's like coming soon videos, a little bit like teaser movie trailers mm. to build up to the launch and you launch it and then it's live. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, I think it shows. But I think it sort of represents, yeah. it's more of like some representation of your brand, yeah. isn't it? Exactly. Um, yeah. See, it's an extension of your brand, which is one of the first thing people are going to see. Yeah. Who so really goes to an estate agent website? Yeah, when really. was the last time you went on your own website? Every day. Every day, yeah. 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 That's just an ego thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm still there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But like people rarely go to an estate yeah, agent yeah. website when you're looking for a house. What did you go right move to yeah, exactly. on the market? But you do go look at the social media, yeah. yeah. And it's just if you go to look at this, it's the first thing you see is just like rubbish. Mm. It's just going to put you off straight away, isn't mm. it? So I think I think it's really important. It's not just about selling the houses; it's about attracting the sellers. Yeah, because they're people buy from people, and so we we just don't post just houses. Mm. It's a lot of people on there, like so they know our dogs. staff. The dogs, a lot of dogs. dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really yeah. Really love dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the next business. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great. Okay. Well, the market at the moment is a little bit uncertain. Would you say is that a fair reflection, or are you still hammering sales through? Have you have you been affected by it at all? Say the beginning of the year. I think we've had a good last quarter. Has been good. It's been steady. Mm. I think maybe people's expectations have changed slightly. Mm. Maybe a way of the sellers 
leave 2021 when mm-hmm. things were booming. And um, it's, been a t- it's been a tough market with the interest rate rising. It's, mm-hmm. But I think in the West, it's over now. Right. Hopefully, there'll be no more Bank of England rate rises. Yeah, well, it's looking the other way at the minute. Isn't things it, things will steady out and people get used to the new norm where interest rates are somewhere 4 to 5%. Mm-hmm. In the days of having 2%. Back to the mortgages are gone. <laughs> yeah, well, all being yeah. well. Um, is there anything you've done to adapt to, to these bit more uncertain times or are you just plodding ahead as you were? We came back in a bit more. Right. We, we, yeah. yes, we had to take a bit more control. And, right. you know, Joe mentioned that Jess, um, who used to work for us, left and she was a company viewer and it was a conscious effort, okay, for a period of time, we will help out and do viewings mm. and see how the land lies. But we've got to a point now where things are relatively back to normal we've actually just hired in the company viewer so mm. um do you think that's an undervalued position because i always i always think people traditionally have seen the company viewer company view, as, as not a not an important position but yeah, i've always rated it's it really extremely important. Important. it's yeah. again it's another extension of your brand that's the Massive first person from yeah. your company someone like me yeah and if that person has a house to sell like sometimes we got view it and you ask them the guy don't even work for the company yeah like, they have a clue about the house. Yeah. You ask them, they go, I don't. The most basic question they can't answer. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, no, we've always had really, like, Jess was brilliant. Jess was amazing. Yeah. Tom yeah. was good. James was good. Yeah. Mm. Like, they all know the industry. Yeah. They know property, so they can answer questions. And then they sort of, um, after reviewing, they'll send the feedback through to the other. We've got what to do. They send the viewing straight back so we know what that person thought. So when we ring them for feedback, we're already mm. prepared for what they do. Think think it's it's actually with what we're doing, I think. Because we're almost evaluating the tenant as much as we are. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, who you sell a property to doesn't really matter too much. But when you're renting a property, it's yeah. a big part of, of the process, isn't it? So yeah. getting that feedback, we've got a great guy, Raj, doing mm. ours. And he, you know, he cares about how many we let and how well we let yeah. as much as anybody else in the office does. Seen him on your social media. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. And he's going to be playing in the five side game. Yeah, he might do, actually. Yeah. <laughs> he looks handy. You tell me his knees are a bit weak yeah. these days. Oh, but everyone's knees are weak yeah. these days. He's yeah. a bit older than you, Joe. Is he? <laughs> Um, if somebody said to you today, like not somebody in your team, but someone, someone random came up to you and said, I really want to do what you guys have done and branch out and create my own thing. Um, is that really? I just don't want it in our competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they're not in Hull then. They're not competition. I'd just say go for it. Like, yeah. if it was the best thing we ever did. Yeah. You've just got to prepare. To yeah, you've got to prepare to put yeah. the work in there. Like, do you know what? Like, I've, I've had, had some meetings for... recently with some guys that they, they pop into the office from time to time. They're about early 20s, 2021 sort of age. The hunger that these guys have got now for business is something that I didn't have at that age. And, you know, mm. I don't think even our generation really were that interested. They're obsessed with it. They're like, I'm not drinking, I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm living, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing it. I do that. Yeah. Well, no, but the, the, <laughs> their hunger for it is way yeah. higher than I was. Well, yeah. definitely mine was. Cats but they're a different well, No, I agree. Yeah, I didn't want to, I just wanted my silent backpack. Yeah. yeah. More work. It's been everything's so accessible though. They go onto Instagram or, or Facebook or whatever and they've got these life coaches yeah. telling them exactly how they should live their life and whether they need to start a business and we didn't have that, did we? Was yeah. it financial freedom within seven days yeah, and or whatever? Like yeah. Yeah. We, we I fell into Simmons and Green. Yeah. It wasn't something that like I cooked up when I was eighteen. Yeah. We just fell into it and I, I started the beer cox because I graduated in two thousand nine and there was no jobs. Yeah. Uh, it was a recession. I had to be a trainee, mm. and I had to sort of swallow a bitter pill. And I was twenty-two, applying for jobs with seventeen, eighteen-year-olds. Mm. Look, I got the job, and um, you know what? Well, you must be grateful for that in a sense. Oh, massive! Oh, I learned so much there. Yeah, I was gonna I, say. Not just in terms of like how to run an estate agency, but I've got back. We we both got back to the properties and mm. like literally showing investors around, learning what good landlords look like and yeah. what not so good landlords look like and what good properties look like yeah um because i always thought i'll just buy houses and i'll rent them out and that'll be my career mm. i never really planned on having an estate agency mm. when i met joe and we realized what we could potentially do we sort of fell into place mm. but like, our first idea was to do a property acquisition company wasn't it we were going to yeah. buy basically source it and that was our right. first idea but then we decided to Give this stage and see grow. Start with that. A lot of these guys that I've met, you know, yeah. going to get into sourcing. I said to them, yeah. think but about I'm... longevity of what you're building. Are you building a business with a value, or are you building a business that might be a cash generator, yeah. but not really anything yeah. else? Sourcing's hard. Yeah. So many people want you deals. Mm. There's, there's not many out there. Do it wrong. There's just a lot of dodgy people in. This should, I think. 
Yeah. And people, they get taken advantage of. But I, was, I had that idea with beer cocks. I was like, just seeing loads of investors coming out themselves, looking in completely the wrong areas, wasting the time, wasting the days, wasting money on hotels and train tickets mm -hmm. and everything. They just need someone to show them how to do it, how to look. Who wasn't going to take advantage of them? Because I wish some anyway, don't they? They're mm -hmm. not really interested in buying a lot of the time, mm -hmm. but some of them are very serious. Yeah, they just need a bit of guidance. Yeah. Really. Good guidance, not someone who's just out for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would just you know, create that relationship because then they'd recommend you to someone else to yeah, know investor. And then obviously, you know, investors in doing. You so you've got some it. properties as well yourself, did you say? You, do you own them together? Do you own them separately? They, they own yeah. by I've got, I've got um, I built up a portfolio of eight on my own back when I was at Beer Cox and I had access to the cheapest houses in East Hall. <laughs> It was like, oh, this person will take 50 grand. I was like, okay, how am I be able to do that? And then, you know, once you get one and you remortgage it, and then yeah. da, 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 and that's so how I managed to get to eight prior to the stamp duty, 3% coming in. Yeah, and, then, uh, and then I stopped because we started Simmons and Greenham and I had like sort of know what respectable income all of my money was going into Simmons and Greenham. But then we got to a point probably about 2020, 2021, where, well, you know, we'd made a little bit of money. And again, a friend came to me and was like, oh, somebody wants to sell, but... Mm. I just want to sell it to someone who's going to be secure and they're not bothered about getting the highest price. And I was like, okay, like, where is it? It's Bristol Road, it's a great area, great area for rentals. So we bought it and then we did the same again. We bought together in a limited company and um, we built up our joint portfolio there, which is sort of loaned money from Simmons and Greenham. And so you're using your knowledge of Paul and your, yeah, your access yeah. to investment yeah. deals, you, you managed to do it yourselves as well. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, not a lot of it comes through Simmons and Greenham. I think maybe the first two came from Simmons and Greenham and there were people who didn't want the highest possible price. Because I always say to people, if you want the highest possible price, mm -hmm. go with the estate agency. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want someone who's going to be secure and you know, you're prepared to take power grand less, mm -hmm. And I could potentially. It's really interesting because yeah. that's sort of an area that we work in, as you know, a little bit yeah. dabbling in investment sales. And people always say to me, like people who are maybe not so experienced in property industries, will say, "Why would somebody not want a top price for the house?" Mm. But I guess it's understanding the processes that, you know, it's not always a guaranteed sale. Even if you get an offer accepted at a certain price, there's a lot of hoops to jump yeah. through. There's yeah. a lot of time to be wasted, and sometimes people, as you say, it's just want properties fall through all the time, and yeah. we see it like month on month, even the what you may think is the securest sale, it might be a cash buyer, it can still fall through. Mm. And well, I would like to think that we're men of our word and if you mm. know we say we're going to do something, we will do it. So mm. if we say we'll buy that property at this price, then we'll do so. Mm. Um, but some, some a couple of them come from Simmons and Green, but a lot of them have just been through other estate teams where I haven't looked on right move and I've noticed they've been on the market for a year mm. and I've gone round and I've said, okay, would you take this? Mm. You know, I've worked with a couple of local estate agents who have, um, you know, done us a good deal as well. Because, mm. you know, I don't think other estate agents hate us. <laughs> yeah, well, I was I'd like to think they about, don't. Because how important do you think it is to have good relationships amongst rivals as such? Like we, we get on very well, but, I mean, do you have that same relationship with others, is it? I was trying to people just to stay off everyone's radar. Right. Just stay off the radar. Mm. Don't want people hating us. So, yeah, we just kind of like live low, really. Yeah. Try not I, to piss anyone off. I, I quite like a few people who work for different stages. And yeah. I could get on with some of them well. Some of them I don't know. Some of them I, I don't know at all. I don't know anybody there. Another one's we've bought houses from them. Mm. Bought houses of Home Estates, so bought houses of William H. Browns. Um, and everyone I've always been great. Mm. And there's been no sort of um, animosity towards us because we may have, you know, Taken a bit of their market share. When yeah, they started. Yeah. There's, there's nothing. Never had any of that. Home says I've got a really good relationship. Yeah, with there, with them there. Yeah. We've got really good relationships with everyone, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously, obviously, we don't like it because we've put a staff and things, but yeah. we tend to get on. I think yeah, you need to have, you do need to have good relationships with mm. because you're all helping each other yeah. out in chains. If you've got three or four agents in the chain. You don't want to be putting heads yeah, out on working together to get that sale. It's like solicitors, they need to work together as well. The UK yeah. market is really different to how like other markets and other countries work. So I, I did a valuation for a chap who was dad had just died in Hull, but he lived in America. Mm. He was like, Oh, in America, well, all the agents work together mm. to find the best possible deal for the client. But there's just somebody to represent the buyer and yeah. someone else represents yeah. the seller yeah. and the, so the agents kind of work together. They get paid yeah. on, on different sides. But wouldn't it be nice if we was like 
you know what, I think that this person might have a buyer. Yeah. Maybe we could split the fee. Yeah. Could could that ever happen in the UK? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Do you think that would work? Potentially. Fees, fees will have to be high. Yeah. yeah. And they are in America. Are, yeah. They're charging two yeah. percent either yeah. side, so it's yeah. So there's a lot of money going around. There is that doggy dog mentality that it's still amongst agents. Yeah. In sales. Yeah, I was going to say actually the, the difference between sales and lettings because lettings when a landlord chooses an agent, I think there's a lot more to it definitely than than prior yeah. rental price because the rental price is what it is. There's no real variance, but they'll very rarely will they get three or four people down to give them a evaluation. Whereas in sales, you kind of see in the same faces when you go into yeah. battles all the time, I guess, and then you, you do develop a bit of a competition there because mm. you're going head to head every day, potentially multiple times a day. Yeah. Um, so it is going to be more difficult in that sense to maintain relationships. You should be passing over the doorstep. Yeah, on that. and you know, if you get on with them, it's great. But if you if you don't, <laughs> yeah, it gets a bit tasty. Yeah, sometimes it used to motivate me if I see some people coming out. Yeah, I'm winning this. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell your customers that because they'll yeah. like down and everybody <laughs> bidding on yeah. price. Yeah. Um, what's next for Sims and Greenham then? Who wants to tell that one? Um, we'll just keep well, going. Exactly. We'll just keep funny. going as as we're going. I think yeah. Try and um, January is always really important, isn't it? And state agency you need to get a bit of momentum going. So yeah. hopefully have a busy January, and then next year we're going to sort of, sort of target sort of like high end properties. Right. Um, so sort of like you know like equivalent like fine and country, okay. and just go after the high end of the market as well. Yeah. Right. So we've got everything running as it is, and then. I'm going to kind of be like taking the lead on that. Okay. The, is that under a separate brand or will that be a It'll still be under the same as in green, but yeah, like a right. sub-brand right. basically, yeah. So in the process of getting all the branding in place. Brilliant. Um, that's really good. Yeah, excited to see how that goes. Yeah, we've got some properties lined up as well and then um, mm. it's just going to be sort of a similar strategy, which I guess, to what we started, similar to green and not low fee, but... You know, just the service, like bespoke service. It's yeah. just going to be me dealing with me, and then eventually Rich will come across. Is it going to be a, a price threshold? How are you determining what goes under that brand and what goes under traditional S and G? It like, all needs to be ironed out, but we're right. sort of thinking sort of like half a million right. upwards, okay. yeah, and then sort of um, trying to expand out into the villages yeah. east and west a bit more. We have like quite a good presence there anyway, and then yeah. hopefully, you know, if you can like start expanding out towards York Way and. Mm. Things like that, so like who knows where it could go. Brilliant. Sky's the limit. When's that yeah. officially being announced? Then is that? No. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, this might go out in January. But... <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll we'll do something on social media for it as well. I feel that's so, where yeah. there is a gap in the market. Is the social media side for the mm. higher? Yeah, it it's going to be really focused on the videography, like high end video, mm. video tours, um, drone work, just sort of like what what we do now, but just use scale up even more. Really. Mm. Um, will you have to charge for that then as an independent service? Is that something you'll look at doing or will it? will it? all be included in the fee. Right. Like, it'll, be, it'll be the same. No sell, no fee? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. can't, can't Big commitment there. I can't sell you, them, yeah. yeah, if you're investing in stuff like that. Yeah. Like, that takes a lot of time. Yeah, 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 yeah we're absolutely. going to incur like, quite heavy costs yeah, on sure. the videography side of things. It won't just be me doing that. I'll be getting, um, I've got a guy lined up to come here to help me with that as well, um, who's really good. He does... Videography for uh, someone at the bridge, and they're really good. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we've been having it's really going to be focused on the video and the marketing and, and the media. Um, but also, um, like, it should be more like a bespoke service. So, you're not getting put through to an audio, you're literally will be just dealing with me, coming yeah. through to me. I'll be doing the VR, I'll be doing everything. Right. Yeah, so it's that bespoke service for that sort of that high end, yeah. high end really. Well, that's a really um, interesting end of the market to be working because I think you've really only got. See, Matthew Lib is quite dominant in that, particularly yeah. Westall Villages. Yeah, You've got, is, obviously, yeah. Fine Country, which are a national yeah. franchise, I think. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah, I think you sort of buy the territory. Yeah. Really yeah. Case, yeah. yeah. yeah but apart from that, there isn't really anybody specifically yeah. going for that market, is there? So. I think... I don't want to get sort of start slate them, but um, I think that those two agents are just a bit behind the times, really. Right. I don't think they've kind of... They're really good at what they do. Mm. Um, you said they've been around a long time, they've got a lot yeah, of boards yeah. out there, so I'm sort of doing something right, I guess. Yeah, they have. Things change, don't they? The mm. world changes, the way you market properties has changed. I think they're a little bit, I think they're just there for the taking. Mm. Going to be disruptors. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I yeah, think if we can, we can take the social media side that we already do for Simmons and Greenham and mm. skin it up a notch mm. to this high end of the market, there shouldn't be any reason why people shouldn't use us because mm. we will give them better exposure 
and better marketing, mm. which will lead to a better price for their house. And, you know, I said before, not everybody wants the most amount of money, mm. but 99% of people do. Mm. And when you're talking percentage terms on a 60 grand house and you get an extra yeah. 5%, okay, it's an extra three grand, but on a 600 grand house, you know, Makes a difference, 30, it? Pound, that yeah. could be a massive difference to somebody. Mm. So I think the better marketing, primarily on social media, mm. will get these guys more money in their pocket. Mm. And, you know, there's a reason why they own a 600 grand house. Yeah. It's because they probably know what they're doing. Yeah. Or the business yeah. minded yeah, and exactly. the understand the of these things. Yeah. So hopefully that will that will translate. Mm. No, it's really we'll, exciting. We'll wait and see. To hear about. Um, and then the name of the brand. Oh, go on then. No, I'll tell you. Well. <laughs> Come on, go on, Joe. I'll tell you after this. All right, okay, yeah. Okay. I'll show you the branding as well. Good, yeah, okay. interesting in that. Um, guys, uh, really impressed with what you've done and achieved in the last seven, eight years, so congratulations on that. Um, Same to you. Likewise, yeah. 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 Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. This office is amazing. Yeah. Blue. Like, yeah. The like from the, was it Willoughby Road? And Willoughby Road, originally. Yeah, yeah. Willoughby Road. Like, look at this. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, it's a long journey. It's more than just an office, yeah. it's the people that matter. I've got yeah. to say that. I will, I, I do tell them as often as I possibly can, but um, yeah, no, I appreciate that. And uh, again, really appreciate you coming coming in today and battling through the traffic to get to Beverly yeah. to, to come and sit and chat with us. And I hope the audience have enjoyed it as much as I have. Yeah, thanks for having um, us. Cheers. Brilliant, thanks.